I've unfortunately met patients in the hospital where the first time that they're told they have diabetes is once they've had a complication already. Their first heart attack, a bad foot infection, and these are usually people who haven't gone for their checkup and they haven't had their blood test done, they haven't seen a doctor in 10 years, so they were blissfully unaware until they develop a complication that they learn of it. So how do you know if you have diabetes? What are some of the symptoms? Increased thirst, being hungry all the time, increased urination, feeling very tired, getting blurry vision, unintentional weight loss, and having wounds that heal slowly. It's important to treat diabetes because of the potential consequences. Most people feel fine from their blood sugars themselves, but when the diabetes is not well controlled, it can lead to complications. When your blood sugars are high, it kind of damages the lining of the blood vessels and those blood vessels can get clogged and then the organs that they feed don't get the blood flow that they need. And when that happens, they don't work like they should. So diabetes is a common cause of eye disease, kidney disease, neuropathy or nerve issues, heart attack and stroke. So keeping diabetes under good control helps to prevent those complications. One of the complications of diabetes is neuropathy, which is damage to the nerves. The first nerves that usually get affected are the ones in the feet just because they're the longest ones, because they have to come from your spine and go down the leg, down to your toes. So usually people will have symptoms that start in their toes and then work their way back, and then in their fingers and work their way up. There is something that's called mononeuropathy, where it's a singular nerve that gets damaged, and sometimes people will just have numbness or weakness of one part of their body, but that's a lot less common. When people have nerve damage, they can either feel weird things that aren't there, and that, that's what we call paresthesia. So sometimes people say they feel like they're walking on cotton balls. Sometimes they say they feel these little lightning strikes on their feet, or they can lose sensation, so they have numbness in their feet. Diabetes is the leading cause of non-traumatic amputation, so amputation not caused by an accident. So it's a combination of both the nerve damage and poor blood supply to the feet. When you can't feel things, if you have a wound or a splinter or something like that, you can ignore it because you don't feel it and most people don't inspect their feet. And we're used to a little discomfort in our feet, so if we feel something mildly uncomfortable, we ignore it. But if you have a wound there that you ignore, it can get infected and if the infection gets worse, it can lead to amputation. And if you don't have a good blood supply there, then even if you're given antibiotics, the antibiotics don't get where they're supposed to go. And that's why very often they will examine your feet to check for any wounds or any signs that you're at risk of developing any wounds on your feet. Hyperglycemic hyperosmolar syndrome occurs in patients who have type two diabetes where the glucose is very high and it causes dehydration. So when your blood sugars are high, your body tries to get rid of that extra glucose through the urine. So that causes you to lose a lot of fluid. And if people cannot make up for that by drinking enough water, they get dehydrated and that can lead to kidney failure. And in worst case scenarios, it can lead to coma and death. Hyperglycemic hypersmolar syndrome generally occurs when patients with type 2 diabetes are under some kind of severe physical stress. So if they have a bad infection, if they have a heart attack, if they um, undergo you know, major trauma, your body makes more adrenaline and other stress hormones, more cortisol, and that makes your blood sugar higher and it makes it harder for insulin to work in the body. And that makes your blood sugars higher than they normally would be. Diabetic ketoacidosis, or DKA for short, happens when the body doesn't have enough insulin in it. And so instead of using glucose as fuel, it breaks down fat in a way that increases the acidity in the blood. Diabetic ketoacidosis is much more common in people who have type one diabetes, but you can also get it if you have type two, especially if your blood sugars are very high. So when there's a deficiency of insulin, when you're not making enough insulin, your body can't move glucose out of the blood into the tissues. But your tissues need some sort of fuel. So your body breaks down fat in an unhealthy way that increases the acidity in your blood. So ketones are the breakdown product of fat and the ketones increase the acidity in your bloodstream. And what is the relationship? Because keto 
is a very uh, popular <laughs> yeah. diet nowadays. Mm -hmm. The production of ketones is not always unhealthy. There's a certain amount that's okay. So in people who are sticking to very low carbohydrate diets, whatever fat they have in their body, they will break down and that will form some ketones. But if there's enough insulin in your body, it's not going to cause DKA. If someone has diabetes and they want to limit their carbohydrates and they want to lose some body fat, there's some controversy as to whether or not it's safe in people who have type 1 diabetes because very often when people are strictly doing the keto diet, they're asked to check their urine ketones. But if you have type 1 diabetes and your glucose is high, we also tell patients to check their urine for ketones to make sure they're not going to DKA. But that's hard to tell whether or not it's because of the diet or it's because of DKA when you have type 1. Some signs that you're going into DKA include rapid breathing because your body's going to try to breathe out the acid. I know it sounds weird, but carbon dioxide is an acid. So in order to get rid of some of the acid, people will have this rapid breathing. Uh, you can also smell the ketones on their breath and it kind of smells fruity. You'll also feel nauseous, kind of vomiting, abdominal pain, confusion. And if it's not treated, you can go into a coma. DKA, if left untreated, is a life-threatening emergency. Unfortunately, very often, people who are developing type 1 diabetes, DKA is their first sign that they have it. If they're unaware that they have diabetes and they start to have some of the symptoms, since they don't know to seek medical attention, very often they let it go. They think they just have the flu. They think they're just sick because they feel achy and they don't feel good. And it's not until they go into DKA and go to the emergency room that they find out that they have type 1 diabetes because they have no insulin on board at all. Now, people who are already being treated for type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes, if they are sick, if they are injured, if they forget to take their insulin, then they can also go into DKA. Patients who have an insulin pump, you know, they are just machines. They're great machines, but they are just machines and sometimes they malfunction. So if there is a kink in the tubing, if the pump's not delivering, again, there's not enough insulin in the body. And so those patients can also go into DKA. Very mild DKA in someone with a known history of type 1 diabetes who has access to insulin can treat it at home. So if they don't feel good and their blood sugar is high and they test their urine and it's positive for ketones, they can take more insulin and stay well hydrated and they don't necessarily have to go to the hospital. But if it is more than that, if they are unable to tolerate li uh, liquid, if they can't swallow because they're so nauseous, or if when they test their urine, it's because it's either small, moderate, or large. If it's moderate or large, then they should go to the hospital and seek treatment. Patients go into DKA when there's just not enough insulin on board. So either they're undiagnosed and they don't know they have diabetes and so they're not taking any insulin, or again, if they have an insulin pump that malfunctions, or if they forget to take their insulin or whatever, that can also increase the risk of going to DKA. But anything that would abnormally increase your blood sugars, such as injury or illness, because your body makes these stress hormones. You make more adrenaline, you make more cortisol, and that raises your glucose, and that can also lead to DKA. Diabetes is a labor-intensive disease to have. Unlike a lot of disorders where your only job is to take a pill, diabetes is a lot of work. You have to check your blood sugar, take your medications, watch your diet, get some exercise. And that can be hard to squeeze in when you have a busy life. It, it requires a lot of work to keep your blood sugars normal. And sometimes patients get so frustrated with it that they give up. They want to pretend like they don't have diabetes. But remember that keeping your diabetes under good control will make you feel better because remember how tired and thirsty and hungry you were when you weren't managing it. You can make those symptoms better by keeping things under good control. Plus, remember that you're gonna be preventing long-term complications, which I know is hard to think about when you're maybe 20, 25. You're not gonna think about what's gonna happen 50 years from now. But remember that by keeping your blood sugars under good control now, you are preventing long-term complications. Making big changes is hard. It is much easier to make one small change followed by another small change. 
It's also important to remember why you're making these changes. If you're just doing it because the doctor told you to, you're gonna do that for a little while. But if you do it because your goal is to not need as much medication, if your goal is to prevent a complication, if your goal is to be around for your kids when they're older, that helps to motivate you to do the right thing. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please continue to visit Healthline and like and subscribe.